Bezat Hashem, welcome to Likutei Moran. This is Likutei Moran. We're learning one complete Torah tonight. Uh, Bezat Hashem, we're learning on the second part of Likutei Moran, Torah 24. Torah 24 is a classic teaching. Mitzvah Gedoyla Liot Besimcha. It's where Rabbi, Rabbi Nachman says it's a tremendous mitzvah always to be happy. And this is also going to prepare us for Passover. At the end of the lesson, we're going to talk about Rabbi Natan's commentary in this Torah that he writes in Likutei Halachot. Likutei Halachot is the Breslover commentary on Shulchan Orach. It was written down by Rabbi Natan of Breslov based on the teachings of Rabbi Nachman. And he explains the Shulchan Orach according to the principles of Likutei Moran. Okay, so if you have a Likutei Moran, you can open up the second part, Torah 24, uh, and we, Rabbi Nachman starts off, he says, Mitzvah gidoy l'liot b'semcha, l'itgabir l'achik atzvut v'amara shchora b'chol kocho. It's a tremendous mitzvah to be happy always and to make every effort to avoid sadness and depression at all costs. Then he continues, so this is uh, something that many doctors, bright doctors and natural, natural path doctors they're aware of, uh, Indian doctors, Chinese doctors, they know because they got their medicine from us, from ancient Israel. Rabbi Nachman says, all sickness that people suffer from is the outcome of a breach of joy. Says he traces, Rabbi Nachman traces all sickness, breach of joy. We're soon to see this. This is a masterpiece of Rabbi Nachman's knowledge in every single intellectual discipline. He knows medicine better than doctors. He knows astronomy better than astronomers. He knows mathematics better than mathematicians. He's got, because he's got the secrets of divine wisdom. Within the secrets of divine wisdom, it's kindergarten, the wisdom of the of of, of this world. And Rabbi Nachman has that all that on the palm of his hands, and he never learned a word in a secular book in his life. Okay, so that's the answer to people that say, oh, if they don't have a, a secular education, what's it just a yeshiva education? We have to learn in yeshiva, you have to be serious and go in depth. But when someone learns their great, 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 greats of, of our of our time, the, the Rambam, Maimonides, uh, that Melitzer Rebbe's grandfather, the Shatzer Rav of London, never opened up a secular book in his life. And he knew science and astronomy. The, the, the professors, visit professors from Germany visit him in an astronomical uh, uh, fair in London. And the shots are, he said they, they made a, a, a 0.2 second mistake in the orbit of the moon around the sun. And they all couldn't believe it, but he was right. He was right. He was more accurate than, than NASA. Okay, so this is... That, that's why we call Rabbi Nachman, we call him a flowing river, the source of wisdom, because he's plugged into the source of wisdom, the divine wisdom. So now he teaches us how our health is connected to our, our mood. Okay. Rabbi Nachman says there are 10 types of song, which are synonymous with joy, as King David says in Psalm 92. Now, if you take to if you talk to a master composer, maybe Zubin Mehta in, in India, and said, how many types of song are there? How many types of melody? I said, Pete, what, what are you talking about? What do you mean the question? Because he doesn't know we're talking about the type of melody that the Levites had in the Holy Temple. And this was melody that came right down from the Almighty. And this is what we said, mentioned this last night in our Moon Hour lesson, that if we would hear one time, the music in the Holy Temple, we'd they'd bid light lamentations and cry our eyes out. Okay, so Rabbi Nachman says in Psalm 92, he says, Psalm 92, with a 10 stringed lyre and with a psaltery. A psaltery is like a lyre, but a lyre looks like uh, it's, it's round. But a psaltery is a stringed instrument that looks triangular. Okay, it's an ancient Israel string instrument that the Levites had in the Holy Temple. And uh, Maybe, I, I think in the Far East, there's something like it today. Uh, in Afghanistan, pa the Afghanistan has something like that. The uh, the Pashtun, and the, say the Pashtun, there's a lot of proof that the Pashtun are one of the 10 lost tribes. that They, they come from, there are many names within Afghanistan 
uh, that, are, that are Hebrew names that they, they named the, the tribe. And they have a lot, lot the Pashtuns have a lot of customs that resemble our customs. Okay, so it's that, that King David mentions three, three instruments here, a 10-string lyre, a psaltery, and with a solemn tone on the harp. Okay, so you then then he says, you have given me joy by your deeds, Hashem. I sing with joy at the work of your hands. So what do we learn from this? Rabbi Nachman says, that, okay, this we learned from what King David just said, that joy is synonymous with song. When King David says, he mentions the song, he mentions uh, playing instruments, and he says, I, you've given me joy by your deeds. And I have joy at your hands. So we have a juxtaposition of music and joy, a juxtaposition of instruments and joy. Okay, this is King David. Now, King David, King, uh, Merbinaka goes a step further and he says, Oh, Rabbi Nachman says, there are 10 types of melody that correspond to 10 types of pulse. Ask your cardiologist how many types of pulse there are. Maybe he'll tell you seven or eight. No, it was 10. They're 10. Uh, again, Eastern medicine, Indian, heuristic medicine, they understand the 10 types of pulse. And I think 10 types of pulse, they got that. Where is it mentioned in Torah? It's mentioned in Zohar. The Zohar, Rabbi Nachman, he said that the Torah in the back of his hand. And the Zohar, Rabbi Shon Bayerchai, talks about the 10 types of pulse when it's going to tell you about them. And, and, and listen, but after, if, if you like anybody wants, I'll send them a list of them. Okay, I did do research into exactly what are the two types that the modern doctors don't know about, that the Indian doctors knew about, that Rabbi Shon Bayerchai know, knows about, because they aren't listed specifically in the Zohar, but Rabbi Nachman understood them intrinsically. He knew how to understood, uh, understand uh, a word within a word. Okay, so we learn that there are 10 types of songs that enter into 10 types of pulse. And how do we get our pulse? That the song, song comes from above, the song gives them vitality. Okay, now I'm going to give you a little secret right now. Uh, why is the 10 Psalms of the Tikkun Klali called the Tikkun Klali, the general remedy? Because each one of the Psalms addresses one of the types of melody that was said in the Holy Temple, and it gets the 10 types. We don't know today, which, at least I don't know today, which Melody corresponds to which type of pulse. But when we have a breakdown in our health, the pulse closest to the organ that has the difficulty has gone, it's got a lack of, of joy. So we hit it intravenously with a, a shot of joy, which is the joy from that particular song that was sung in the Holy Temple. And that's one of the 10 toms of the, of, of the Tikkun Klali. So therefore, uh, when a person has melancholy, person has sickness, has all the 10 Psalms, then he covers himself. This is very good for the health. And it's also good for personal holiness. When someone has a breach in, in, in purity and personal holiness, tikkun klali, it, it's a general correction, corrects everything. It's a general correction for health. So one of the best things a person could do for himself or herself when they don't feel good is to say the tikkun klali, the 10 Psalms of tikkun klali, and I'll soon give them to you in case you don't know them. Okay, so each one of these 10 types of songs enter in to the type of pulse. The pulse gets its, spiritually, the pulse gets its uh, vitality from the song. That's why in the time of the Holy Temple, people would run to the Holy Temple. Because if they felt bad before the festival, they'd come home feeling great. They'd come to like being, you're being at the, the best spot, whatever happened. They would hear the Levites singing in the Holy Temple, and they'd come home healthy. And this is fancy. So if there's a breakdown of blemish and joy, which is synonymous with the 10 types of song, then the 10 different pulses become irregular due to the 10 types of song or joy that manifests in sickness. Okay, now the 10 types of pulse, I'll tell you what, what they're right now. We have pulse in the temporal, temporal artery, that's at the side of the head, and we have it in the carotid artery, that's in the side of the neck. The third type of pulse in the brachial artery, which is in the midline of the arm, the front of the elbow. The fourth is the radial artery at the wrist on the thumb side. And the fifth is the ulnar artery at the, at, uh, at the wrist on the pinky side, pinky finger side. 
And the six is the abdominal aorta, the left and the midline of the abdomen. For some reason, it's a modern, I looked at modern medicine, modern medicine, they ignore, this is one of the types of pulses that they ignore. And the uh, person that left in the midline of the abdomen, that's called the abdominal aorta. There's a major vein there and they can feel the pulse there. The seventh is the femoral artery that's in the groin area. The eighth is the popliteal artery artery, that's the midline behind the knee. When you lie down and you've been on your feet, a lot of times you could lie down, you feel your knees behind the knee throbbing. That's your popliteal artery. That's your pulse there. The ninth is the tibial artery. It's behind the bony portion of the ankle. The same thing when you've been on your feet a lot of times, you lie down, you could feel the pulsation in your feet. That's that. And the 10th is the dorsalis pedis artery. That's the midline on top of the foot. Okay, those are the 10 types. 10 types. And then we have the 10 types of song that they correspond to them, and we'll give them to you that in, in a minute. But we'll continue on with Rabbi Nachman, when doing a flow with his thought. Rabbi Nachman says the 10 types of illnesses are contained within the 10 types of pulses. Similarly, all the different types of song are contained within the 10 types of song. The illness that arises corresponds to the flaw and the corresponding joy, the corresponding song. That the flaw and joy, if a person has a flaw and joy, that's a, a flaw in a certain song, and that corresponds to the pulse, and then a person doesn't feel well in that part of the body, whether it's the head, whether it's the stomach, whether it's the heart, uh, and these even Rabbi Nachman even says the eminent physicians. I think he's talking about the natural physicians. They were always the, the good physicians back then were not the European and the American physicians, but the physicians were the Eastern physicians, the North African physicians. That they've spoken at length about this. That all illness is the product of sadness and depression. Rabbi Nachman stresses this again. This is the third time he says this. All illness is the product of sadness and depression. And that's why Rabbi Nachman stresses so much throughout his teachings, mitzvah gedolia b'simcha. And Rabbi Nachman says, you got to be happy, even if it's foolish. Tell a silly joke. Tell something stupid. You know, make a, 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 a dress up like a clown. And do something silly, but be happy because it's for your health. It's better to be, better to be uh, silly and healthy than serious and, and, and unhealthy. <laughs> Who needs that? And Rabbi Nachman now says, "Vasimcha yirufua gedoyla, latitit gedela simcha maod al kena mua abeitan zechon avcha atid a kadosh bochul yot rosh machol tzadikim atid lavod ha'inu shasem machol tzadikim huid barach ye rosh cholet." Rabbi Nachman now comes with one of his famous plays on words. This is like every word is a kaleidoscope. He says, first of all, joy is a great healer." Again, for the fourth time, joy is a great healer. That's it. And then he says, in the future. Joy will increase tremendously. And why it's going to increase tremendously? The it, closer we get to Mashiach, the scarier it is. Like right now, what's going on in Israel? Uh, there's some people, people without a Muna, I really feel sorry for them because they are so scared. And, and they, what's, what's going to be with Iran? Where's Iran going to hit? And then people have a Muna. What are you talking about? This is part of the scenario of Mashiach. You open up the prophets, open up 14th chapter of Zechariah. You know, this is all part of the thing. So we're excited. This is what Rabbi Nachman says, that the, the in the future, uh, Simcha is going to be a lot more. Joy is going to be a lot more. Why? The closer we get to Mashiach. Yes, it's scary for those that don't have a Muna. And it's happy for those that do have a Muna. Yeah, it's it's like a, an a excited happiness. Sure, you know, you know, nobody wants anybody to be hurt. But uh, that's it. And especially... When Mashiach comes and we have the Holy Temple, oh, is that going to be a party? That is going to be such a party. And that's why everybody has to hope for Mashiach, hope for Mashiach, hope for Mashiach. And, and don't think that uh, there's no discount for Noahides. No, the Noahides have to hope for uh, the Holy Temple just as the Jews do. Because you've got to remember one thing, that uh, sacrifices are accepted in the Holy Temple from Noahides. Okay, they come and offer sacrifice just like a Jew. We mentioned last night uh, just how we saw how King David, uh, King David, he honors the Noahides, talks to the nations of the world. And the next sentence he says, 
to the Bnei Noah, to the sons of Noah. So we say, wait a second, that's a Noah, the nations of the world. Why does King David use a double language? Because here's if he's talking to the nations of the world, he's talking about the non-believing nations, the idolatrous nations. And then he talks, when he says the sons of Noah, he's talking about Noah's offspring that go in the way of Noah. And, and that's it. He, he juxtaposes them with the Jewish people. In other words, first he talks about we learned this yesterday in Psalm 50, Psalm 49, Psalm 50. First, he talks about the nations of the world. Then he talks about the sons of Abraham and the sons of Noah. They come in the same sense in one breath. Okay, so we learn that that for different types of illnesses are contained within the 10 types of pulse. Now, joy is a great healer. The future is going to be increased. And what is it? Rabbi Nachman's uh, play on words here, he brings a passage, brings an idea that comes from the Yerushalmi Gemara, and it says, Atid, Akadish is a play on words. Chole means sickness, and Chole means a dance to song. Okay, so he says, in the future, Hashem is going to be the Chole. It, it was it's going to be connected to sickness and Hashem will be connected to dancing. What's going on here? This is really cryptic. And this is like Rabbi Dalman's teacher, if you have to take down and look at him. Okay, so in other words, Rabbi Nachman is when he says that Hashem is going to be chole, Hashem is going to make a dance circle. That's called a machol. That comes from the word chole. A machol. A machol is a, a dance circle. You see the way Hasidim dance, they dance around in a circle. See, at a Jewish wedding, they dance around in a circle. Our dance is based in dancing around in a circle. Okay. And so Hashem is going to form a circle for all the righteous, and Hashem is going to be at the head of the circle, then apart, at the blessed bit. So this is the play on words also, because now if we open up our Gemara and tractate the door in page 40, it says, Ki ashkina lamala marishito shechole, kumushto shu, abotenu zechon of chosh, namar Hashem yisadon eras dvai. Now, what's the play on words? The Gemara also tells us that the divine presence hovers over the head of the sick person. And that's, we say in Psalm 41 that God sustains the sick person on the sickbed. In other words, the Gemara tells us that when a person is lying down on his or her sickbed, heaven forbid, that on the head, on the bedstand, over, right over the head, that's the divine presence. Because when the person is really sick, the person has no vitality. So what does Hashem do? Hashem, he practices all his mitzvot. He does all of his mitzvot. And there's a mitzvah to visit the sick. Hashem visits the sick. Not only does he visit the sick, he revives the sick. Because the sick has no vitality on their own. Hashem is giving their vitality. Hashem is giving them their breath. Hashem is giving them their heartbeat. That's Hashem. So we see that Hashem is the head of the dance which is machol, and Hashem is visiting the sick, and that's chole, and from the same word, chole, this, this is the play on words, and Rabbi Nachman explains it. So he says, So in the future, all sickness will be remedied through joy. And Hashem will be the head, exclusively the head of the dance, because Hashem won't be need to be visiting the sick, because everybody will be happy and they won't be sick. And this is what Isaiah the prophet talks about in the time when the lion dies, dies down to the lamb and break the swords into a plowshare. Everybody's going to be happy. There's going to be no, no violence and and no CNN and no BBC and no this and no no fake news and you know, no, whew, no no New York Times. It's just going to be all all Torah and all the the daily the daily word the daily blessing from the Holy Temple. Okay, what did the high priest say today? What did the head of the Sanhedrin say today? And that's that's going to be everybody's going to be happy. And be happy. By the way, be very, very, very careful. If you go on social media, I know we have social media. Uh, and Muna Beams has social media. Personally, have social media. We use social media to advertise our lessons. Okay, we don't use social media to read what's on it. In other words, it's output, not input, because there's nothing to read on that. It's dangerous. Because everybody that's writing, people that are writing, they have they don't have a muna, and they write depressing things. And why a person makes literally makes himself or herself sick? Be very careful, stay off of that. And if you do need it to advertise something 
encouraging, something positive, something kosher. You know, give, give, but don't receive. Not for that. You don't want to drink water out of a, a, a polluted, contaminated source. You're going to drink this way. Water, you want to drink fresh water, fresh, healthy water. Okay. So now that is why that both the joy and the dance are called play in the future that uh, Hashem will only be the head of the dance because he won't need to curse everybody to be healthy. Now I'm going to tell you the 10 types of Nagina and the 10 Psalms of the Tikkun Klali and where they appear. Okay, the first Psalm, the Tikkun Klali, is Psalm 16. The type of Megina is called a bracha, and that's a blessing melody. The first type, blessing melody. The second Psalm is Psalm 32, and that's called Ashrei, and that's a happiness melody. Okay, the third is Psalm 41, and that's, we see the word maskil. Maskil is literally, it's the wise man, the, wise, the translator, but this is the translator's melody or the wise man's melody. In the holy temple, the, uh, at the time of the temple, the vernacular street talk was Aramaic. Hebrew was the talk of the Torah scholars and the talk of the Bible. Okay, but the industry. So what would ha- what would be is when one of the sages would give a lesson, he would say it in the holy tongue in Hebrew, and that the wise man, the translator, he would translate it over in Aramaic. Okay, so he would see, he would, this is, there was a, a wise man that he translated some of King David's Psalms, that's called the Moscow, and in the Holy Temple. So he had his own melody, and that's one of the 10 melodies. Four is Sheer, that's the basic song. That's the basic song, let's say if you play the guitar, that's your CFG7, okay, that's your basic three chords, that's that's the Sheer. Uh, five is Mitzuach, Mitzuach is the conductor's melody. Conductor has his own particular melody. Six is nigun. Nigun, that is the basic melody. Ask me, what's the difference between a basic song and a basic melody? A song is vocal. A melody is with, without words, was instrumental. Okay, there you go. I see David's playing the guitar already. Go ahead. You can, you can play, play in the background, David. Uh, seven is the prayer melody, tefillah. That is in Psalm 90. Oh, by the way, I didn't give you, okay, Moskiel, number three, that's Psalm 41. Number four is Psalm 42. Number five, Nitsuach, the conductor's melody is Psalm 59. The basic melody is Psalm 77. The prayer melody is Psalm 90. And the eighth melody is Hodu. That's the gratitude melody. That's Psalm 105. And Mizmo, which is Psalm 127, that's the song of praise. And finally, we have Psalm, we have the 10th, and that is in Psalm 150, the final Psalm. That's Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brother. Hallelujah, sister. And that is the jubilant song. That's the Hallelujah. Okay. And that's uh, what they, uh, uh, the gospel folks love that. Uh, they, they put that uh, Okay. But did, we look forward to hearing all, all 10 types. Now, the mystery is which melody corresponds to which type of pulse? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't find anywhere where I could feel anywhere in uh, esoteric sources or in Rabbi Nachman's writings. And that's why we say the entire Tikkun Klali at once to cover all our bases. And then we, we had all ten, 10 types of melody. And this is the brilliance of Rabbi Nachman. There was a big complaint in the heavens that the dark side did not want Rabbi Nachman to bring down the Tikkun Klali, the 10 Psalms. They didn't want this to happen. Okay, but uh, Rabbi Nachman, he did. And according to tradition, uh, this is one of the reasons why Rabbi Nachman was taken young. <laughs> he sacrificed for it. He said he had to bring it down because he had to give people a solution for uh, sadness, a solution for sickness, a solution for breach in personal holiness. Uh person messes up in personal holiness. Rabbi Nachman says, hey, you lam klau. there's no despair in the world. He says, since he brought down from the heavens, the secret of the 10 types of nigun, the 10 types of mili, 10 types of song that he got from the portal of the Levites. This we know where they come from. They come from the portal of the Levites and way up in heaven, very, very high, high, high portal in heaven. And he brought them down. Uh, but he said, since he brought them down, that there's no reason for despair. So even if you've done the worst sin and you do tshuva and you say tukun klali, there's no despair. 
Okay, so this, we've now read, learned all of, of, of Torah 24 in the second part. Now it's connection to Passover. If we want to see its connection to Passover, Rabbi Natan of Breslev writes a whole commentary based on Torah 24, and we find it in Likutei Alachot, the laws of Passover, laws of Pesach, second chapter, second clause. And Rabbi Natan says like this, he reiterates what Rabbi Nachman taught us, that, that, that joy is the cure, it's the overall cure for everything. Overall cure for every sickness. So Rabbi Nathan says like this, Why did you think that we merited a redemption from slavery in Egypt? Rabbi Nathan says because of happiness. That there were, and we asked the question last week, why, why was only 20% of the people, no, that was last week, that was at Zichron Yaakov, Monday night. I said, if you if you saw a replay on uh, the the road to redemption, why did why are we so happy on, on on Passover night? Passover night was Holocaust night. Eight million people died in the three eight million Jews died in the three days before Passover. That's more than what died in the gas ovens. <laughs> Six million, eight million people. And here we are, Abadimayinu, and with our best clothes and our best silver and our best jewelry. And a woman is not supposed to flaunt her riches, but you come to the Seder table, uh, young lady, with all your gold and all your rings, and you flaunt it because this is the gold that you took out of Egypt. This is commemoration of the, the spoils from Egypt. So you come and you look like a princess. You look your best and you're decked out in gold. You know, we don't do this. You go to a wedding and make people look at you and you're know, flaunting and maybe bring a, a, a I know, and you lie. No, no, we don't do that. But the, inside the house at the Passover table, we do. What's all this joy? And little kids, we dress them up in their little Lord Fauntleroy suits and give them pre presents, Safi Coleman. What's going on here? It's Holocaust night. How come we're not sad when 8 million people died? And how can Rabbi Nachman say that the redemption was joy? One out of five looked forward to the redemption. Why did they look forward to the redemption? Because they had a Muna. This is why Muna is everything. All the King Solomon says that all the rivers come to the sea. If we take everything good and we find it all, it's all based in a Muna. So the joy, it all it comes from Muna. A person cannot have joy without holiness. It can't have holiness without a muna. It doesn't go together. So one out of five, they believed in they believed in Hashem, and they believed in Hashem's power above nature. The other four of the five, they were intellectuals. They had to think that intellectually, and they, what their eyes couldn't see, they wouldn't believe in. And how can Hashem take us out of Egypt? When one single slave couldn't escape Egypt, Egypt was an iron curtain of idolatry and witchcraft. Pharaoh and Egypt closed up and nobody could get out. <laughs> and they, 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 there's no way to get out of here. And no way to get out of here. Another reason is that they thought that the first eight plagues were nature. And if it weren't nature, uh, then the, the witchcraft of the Egyptians, the Egyptians were PhDs in witchcraft. Uh, they could do that they could they could take a little bit of water and turn it to blood but they couldn't turn blood back into water and they could produce a frog or two at the, out of black magic of the egyptian witch could pull a frog out of his sleeve an egyptian soothsayer and so that they said maybe it is but when it came to the last two plagues they weren't around because rashi tells us that they died in the three days of darkness why they died in three days of darkness? Because Hashem didn't want to embarrass the Jewish people in front of the Egyptians. So the Jewish people that didn't have a Muna, they said bye-bye. They didn't merit to, to the redemption. So to merit the redemption, you have to have a Muna and Simcha. And then we merit the redemption. And it's going to be the same thing in the coming redemption also. Uh, the Gemara says not everybody's going to make the finish line. If you want to make the finish line, then your insurance policy is a Muna and joy and Simcha. And they go together because when you know that Hashem is running your life, that's it. That's fine. This with three words of Muna is all on that point. Our little book, three words of Muna, that's standing on one foot. It says that at the first principle of Muna, Hashem did, doesn't, will do everything. 
Second point, Hashem is our loving Father in heaven. Third point, if therefore, if Hashem runs everything, if Hashem does everything, and if Hashem is our loving Father, it's a no-brainer that whatever he does is going to be the best. It wasn't cleaning for Pesach this afternoon. Boy, did I bash my head against that. Who saw stars? Thank you, Hashem. We learn to automatically, automatic, automatic reaction. Thank you, Hashem. If I don't say thank you, Hashem, within the first second, then it's going to come something. <laughs> but no, it didn't go to bad page. Why do I thank you, Hashem? You neutralize the Yetzir Sahara. You neutralize the evil inclination because it's right away the Amunah. This we have to get ourselves used to. Even we hear, heaven forbid, heaven forbid, the worst thing in the world. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. So this is the redemption, the Geula of Mitzrayim, the Geula from Egypt, based on happiness. And the 80% of the population didn't have it and they didn't make it out. So how do we get that happiness on Passover? Rabbi Nathan says, Simcha u'olam acherut. Joy is the world of freedom. When I used to be rabbi of a prison in the beginning of my rabbinical career, that was my first rabbinical post before I was at a koil. was a rabbi of a prison here in Israel. And I used to tell the inmates uh, that there's high walls in front of them, behind them, to the, each side of them, and had to go through. Even when I, when I would go to the prison in the morning, I had to go through seven inspections and seven locks. It was really depressing <laughs> by the time you get in there. But up, if 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 you if you could close your eyes and maintain joy, and that was the that was our what we used to do with spiritual rehabilitation in the prison. Teach them Torah, teach them Amuna. Mr. Star Muna, I first taught the prisoners, and they got a lot of emotional hangups, but they find out that's freedom. When you have joy, you're free, and you could be depressed and you're shackled to negative emotions. There is no taskmaster like negative emotions that shackles a person and just locks them up like it it's tied up in a straitjacket. So this is the Isaiah tells us in. In chapter 51 of Isaiah, that by way of joy, you go out of all, all bondage. You, you go, you're down the road. Okay, joy takes you. And then if we learn that our redemption, our geula, is from simcha, from joy, Rabbi Natan says the opposite is also true, that exile is from depression. And we see that in the first temple, Okay, the Gemara tells the first temple was because of idolatry. The idolatry brought people down into depression. Why did they do idolatry? Because the Torah clipped their wings. Uh, with the Torah, you can't look at the neighbor's wife. I don't want to be more explicit than that. But in order to doubt themselves, they didn't say they had to ignore the Torah, go to the idol. The idol didn't bother them. The idol says, okay, go do. Idol says you want to you want to clip somebody in business? Okay. You want to do something outside the context of your marriage. Okay, the idol doesn't bother, but that all brings a person down. Any transgression of Torah, because it affects a negative effect, it cuts off divine light from the soul. And divine, divine light is what gives happy. That's what's at Or Sameach. There's a yeshiva in Israel called Or Sameach, same in Muncie. And that's the happy light. What's the happy light? That's the divine illumination on your on your soul, which is in your brain. It makes you happy. And when a person is doesn't feel well, when a person is depressed, I have to take stock. Where did I make a breach of Torah? Where did I make a breach of Torah? And then right away, if he doesn't know, pick up the Tikkun Klali, pick up the 10 songs, say the 10, the 10 songs of the Tikkun Klali. So in the first temple, because idolatry, exile, the second temple was intramural hate. You can't hate somebody and be happy. That people hated one another. That the, there was this, that's the scary thing about Israel today. I'm not worried about Hamas. I'm worried about the Jews and each other's necks. And quiet quite and, and and the left and the the, the press and, and all the they, they 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 fan the fire. They fan the fire of the Shiva guys. Your your son is dying on the on, in, in Gaza, and the Shiva boys drinking tea in the Shiva. All types of things to create hate between different parts of the population. If they knew that uh, the guy, the bullet that missed the soldier in Gaza, because that boy did not pick himself up, pick his head up uh, out of the Gemara, that if he was going and walking around, then he's he's, uh, 
He's uh, leaving his post. But by a person learning Torah seriously, he's protected the soldier. Okay, but then when you have this intramural hate, this was Second Temple, no brainer. That's exile. And that's what's so scary today. And that's what we hope, we pray, we hope and pray. Hashem, time is running out. Hashem, you have to reveal yourself to us. And uh, it looks like we see with all the threats and the news and people one by one, Canada against us, and they get arms embargoes all over Europe and all over that one by one, one by one, nations following suit against Israel. Okay. Israel is not the Israel of King David. We want the Israel of King David, where the Torah is supreme, where Hashem is supreme. Okay. We hope for it. We pray for it. We pray for it. Uh, and I mean, but that we can see this. We can see this today that all exile is the result of a breakdown in joy. So where do we get the joy? We get the joy from Passover. We get the joy from Passover. We get the joy from the Passover Seder and all the songs we sing in the Passover Seder because they are freedom songs. And freedom songs are joy songs. At the Seder table, sing and sing and sing and sing. And with the kids, sing and sing and sing and sing. And don't make an intellectual Seder with bringing that difficult touch of quotes from deep quotes. No, sing and make it. You design it for the kids and the grandchildren. That's the way you have to make it. And if your dad, you know, get on, uh, dad, get on all fours and act like a dinosaur and show the fourth plague. That this was the plague like it was really scary. This is what the kids need. And then sing. But, but oh, there's so many wonderful songs. Die, die, yenu, die, die. You go and go to YouTube and, and plug in the Passover songs. And if you don't know them, learn them. And this is this brings in by all these Passover songs that uh, we we hit on as many types of Nagina. We don't know which type of melody, which type of Nagina they are. But we bring this joy, this together with the freedom. Now, what really brings the joy in? Okay, so we've got, we've got the, the freedom. We've got the song. So what really brings it in? Open up the Zohar. And the Zohar calls matzah the bread of joy. That's the name of tonight's lesson. The bread of joy. Why is matzah the bread of joy? Matzah is simple. Matzah is not uncomplicated. We say, what's the difference between leavened and unleavened? Leavened as yeast. What does yeast do? Yeast makes gas that makes the dough rise. Okay. Who is full of gas and rises? The arrogant person. So the Zohar says that leavened bread corresponds to arrogance. Arrogance is depression. Depression is a lack of divine light. It's a, such a beautiful puzzle. Matzah is simple. Matzah is very fresh flour and water. And the whole baking process can take less than 18 minutes. It's got to be hurried. And why 18 minutes? Because Rebbe Nachman says, this is what Rebbe Nachman is talking about. Rebbe Nachman says, you know what happens? If you ever go to a wedding and you see somebody, everybody's dancing, and there's some wallflower on the side, and they grab him and they pull him into the circle. Rabbi Nachman says, this is what you have to do. He says this in Torah 23, right before Torah 24. He says, this is what you have to do to depression. Depression, grab him and pull him into Simcha. And get him, don't leave him like that. Pull him into Simcha. Then find, make some silly joke, do something. Yeah, take a laugh, take your flute, take your guitar, start dancing, start jumping, do something. Okay, do 10 push-ups, run around the block, do something. Get out of the chair, get out of the depressing mode and be happy. Be happy. This is what happens on Pesach. So matzah is simple. Matzah is not bloated. Matzah is humble. Humility is happiness. Because humility, when a person thinks that he or she is nothing, there is no blockage between their soul and therefore there's nothing to block the divine light. Then they are vessels. Okay, you're nothing. You know what's in nothing? Uh, what does a bottle of Rothschild uh, the Baron de Rothschild, 15-year-old French wine, it needs a clean crystal glass. That's what it needs. You don't pour wine into a glass that's half filled with mud. If the more a person is arrogant, the more that wine glass is full with mud. At the, when it's full, there's no place for divine light. Compare divine light to the wine. When a person is humble, 
and he thinks he's nothing. Hashem says, no, you're not nothing. You are a fine crystal glass and you're prepared to receive my fine wine. And that's called Yain Simcha, the wine of joy. That's divine light. And this is what happens when a person eats matzah. You see some people, when a person eats matzah without a muna, oh, what is this? With plywood? When a person eats matzah with a muna, it, the, the taste of matzah on Seder night is indescribable. It is divine bread. It's, it's, it's so fantastic. So you might ask the question, why are we allowed to eat regular bread during the year? Because seven weeks after Pesach, every year at Pesach time, Nisan is the new month. We have to renew Torah. We have to renew our renew our vows, renew our vows to Torah. That we do on the seventh, seventh week, seven days, 49 days after Seder night, after Pesach. That's Shavuos on the 6th of Sivan when we see the Torah from Mount Sinai. So in the meanwhile, while we're counting those days, after Pesach is over, we can eat leavened bread. But many big tzaddikim, they won't eat leavened bread until Shavuos. They'll continue eating matzah for seven weeks. And they'll wait. One thing, uh, yeah, Bo Hashem, Bo Hashem. Uh, there are intermediate uh, customs. Some just eat bread uh, after Pesach. They eat bread on, on Shabbat until Shavuos. And some, there's all different types of customs, but they're all based on, on this one idea. Once we receive the Torah, then we can eat leavened bread without being arrogant. But now... This gives us a chance on the Seder night, we all become purified. And even though we don't sacrifice the Paschal Lamb in the Holy Temple, it's tantamount. The Seder night is tantamount. So we have the matzah. We have the singing. We have the story of, of, of coming out of Egypt. And we have our joy of freedom. And with all those elements, you should have the most wonderful Passover you ever had. And all your heart's wishes for the best. Amen.